Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. I'm Diane and today we're going to paint a tree frog and a dragonfly. And uh, let's get started. So I'm first of all going to sketch this composition and uh, I'm using a horizontal for, uh, format today. Um, and I'm going to put the tree frog here and the dragonfly is going to be over here. So if you want the sketch to this by any chance, if you feel you'd like to use my sketch as a starting point for your own um, work, then by all means uh, head on over to dianeanton.com and you will find the um, the tracing there and you can download that free of charge and uh, use that to solve your drawing problems if you have any. Sometimes people just want to do things a little bit more quickly so just try, trace it and then you can do it several times without having to worry about the, the sketch turning out every time and you know if, until you've got some experience uh, in drawing and some people just never really enjoy um, the drawing side of things so I'm just trying to sketch in a characterful sort of uh, froggy here thought about this because we were doing some landscapes the other day of um, tropical paradises like Bermuda and the Bahamas and so on uh, where we did at one time live for a little while while my husband was working there and we used to have tree frog trouble they made such a tremendous amount of noise and they sometimes got into our bedrooms and they would live on the walls and just completely keep you awake at night <laughs> and one of the hotels where we used to go where my husband worked actually um, they had a tree frog that had got inside the hotel and was living in the fountain in the foyer and every time you walked in you had this tree frog noise and we all thought at first that it was a recording to make it sound like authentic um, Bermuda um, and then I think even the manager thought it was actually a recording when he first started working there and then we all figured out that it was actually a, a real live tree frog it was hilarious so there we are, there's the tree frog and the dragonfly is going to be coming down oops, from the right hand side here and we know because we've done dragonflies before haven't we, we know that they're segmented animals with little tails at the end, their bodies get bigger towards the front obviously, they have a, a, a head with um, quite large eyes and then they have legs which come out like that and then their wings come from the center here and they sort of go over like that something along those lines so there we are. I think that's going to be okay and now I have to decide how we're going to actually do this so while I'm thinking about that, I will start with the eye of the frog, which is going to be uh, black in the center, of course. And it's going to be a round, fairly large. You can always adjust the, the light in the eye afterwards once we um, get to the end. If we don't like the way he's looking, change the angle or the amount of light in his eye. So we'll just put some a black ring around that to start with, just to give him a little bit of character. And then we're going to be using a nice bright green for the body of the tree frog. And, and we're going to mix that with a little bit of um, Quinacridone gold. But first of all, as is usual, I'm going to wet the frog. I'm going, going to, I think I'm going to go over the whole thing. Um, 
and then I will drop in some green and quinacridone mix. It's more yellowy around this area here, so we'll probably put a little bit of, of that in here, mostly, first of all. And then I'm going to go for the green on his back. And just kind of encourage that down. Let that run a bit. I think he's probably got some on the top of his nose and down into his legs. I have to confess this is the first time I have painted a tree frog. Although when we were living in Bermuda, my daughter was quite taken with them. She had one living in her bedroom and um, she painted them as well. So trying to persuade her to um, take up art. Now we've got this channel and uh, I hope she's going to at some point get over her um, fear of spoiling a sheet of paper because she's quite an artist, but she just won't, doesn't want to risk it. So, there we are so far. I think I'll just take that up there. Now that's a little bit drier. And we'll leave that to um, think about life and the meaning of it. Maybe I'll just add a little bit of, I was thinking pink, that's not really, Pink, 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 potter's pink. A little bit of potter's pink there. I'm breaking in a new brush. I just started this brush. New one, very pointy. Um, so I might make some mistakes. Okay, now as far as the butterfly, uh, the, um, what do you call it, goes, we will, I think, probably go for a sort of analogous type of thing. We'll go for blue. So we'll pop some blue segments in there. And then I'm going to wet the wings. And I think I'm going to mix just a tiny bit of green and some blue and we'll pop some in up there and down here and maybe some here and then we'll let that do its thing and we'll come back to that shortly and we'll know what we've got to work with. Um, now this has dried out a bit I can put the yellow with the frog's eye in there to start with. And I might add a bit of pen and ink to this. We'll have to see how it goes. So uh, I do think I actually need more green in there. I wasn't very impressed with my idea of pink. I'm just Strengthen up some of the colour. It's a little bit, um, I mean, they're not really this colour, I don't think, but then who's to say? I argue, well, when I can be bothered, uh, over, you know, what's turquoise, what's green, what's blue. I tend to see things differently from quite a lot of people. Okay, no more fiddling. I stop now and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, the next step with the dragonfly is to put in the legs. I'm using a Stettler pigment liner 0.1 and I'm going to draw in the eyes and then I'm going to kind of outline the segments a bit to give a little bit more structure to it, make it a little bit more interesting and uh, there we are. I'm not going to try and indicate his other legs, we can pretend that they're underneath. 
and we're just very lightly, you need a very fine nib for this. You don't want uh, to make the lines too heavy. Just a little bit. Then when that's dry, we can put in some veins in there if you want. And uh, still got to wait for the um, frog to dry. He's still wet, so I'll be back in a minute. Now I'm just going to um, use my watercolour pencils to draw in the veins on the um, on the wings of the dragonfly. So I'm just looking for a dark blue, darkish blue. That says it's green, but doesn't look like it's green. Nacht green. There you see, there we go. This is what I was just talking about. Is that blue or is that green? It says on here, night green. I'm struggling with that as green. I think that's blue. And since it's positioned with the rest of the blues, I think somebody else might have thought that was a blue. Anyway, I think that's probably going to be about the right color. So I'm just going to put in one or two, just literally one or two veins. And then down the side here, I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow on the side of the dragonfly. There we go, that's just to make him look a little bit more solid. And then just because it's so small, we'll do the eyes with a red pencil like that. And since I've got the pencils here, I probably could do myself a favour and uh, brighten up the eye of the frog with the pencils as well. And then I'm going to use a dark green, um, sea green this one is, and I'm going to put some markings on his back. Just some spots like that, and put a little bit of shadow there under his eye maybe. I don't want to get into too much detail because that's not what I do. But we will just, I think this is quite a good way of putting spots on the back of the frog, don't you? And then we'll drop in some smaller spots just by stippling along here. He's got this um, fold in his leg. And then maybe a little bit of shadow on his feet. There, like that. And then his mouth. Like that. There we are. Now all that remains is to give him something to sit on. So we'll, I will rub out some of those pencil lines afterwards. So we will put him on a neutral colour, I think. I'm wondering about Potter's Pink or any kind of light beige. I'm thinking Potter's Pink because I'm thinking of the Bermuda beaches, which were a little bit on the pink side. So let's give him a pink shadow. And we'll just keep it down this end here. So there we are. And when he's completely dry, I will rub out the pencil lines and that makes it always makes a little bit of a difference, that does. Oh, and maybe, do you think, I don't know, what do you think? Do you think he needs a little bit of shadow under his chin? Right then. So for painting like this, if you want to run the hairdryer over it to make sure it's absolutely dry, um, no harm in that. So I'll probably do that now and then take a photo for the video. So I will say goodbye for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you have a spare like, I would love one. And um, if you care to subscribe and click on the notifications button, that would be really good. Uh, we are always looking for people to get involved with the channel and uh, learn to paint with me. And also don't forget our website, um, dianeanton.com, where we have free downloads of these um, 
paintings for you to draw and also the Learn to Paint Watercolour Facebook group which is quite active, got 10,000 members on there. So I'll see you there, if not here, and I'll be back tomorrow. So bye for now. Bye everyone. Bye bye.